Uh, welcome, everybody. We'll do it uh, as, a, as, a double, as, a, as a duo. Yes. So we are working on this project together. Uh, I'm working in the uh, European Commission, uh, Directorate for Informatics, and as a permanent uh, uh, official of the, of the commission, Saranjit is working as a project manager for this project only. So he's yeah. much more involved in this. I have mo many more projects to deal with. And so that's, yeah, more or less the background why we are doing it uh, together. Right. Thank you, Marek. Um, so what we'll be talking about today is this uh, project that is a pilot project, you could say, uh, that was running since 2015 in the, in the commission. We are about to, to end it. There are still some uh, ongoing activities. I will, will talk about it later, but mostly it is, it is done. And we will be talking also what we want to do next. Uh, yeah. um, first so. of all, happy birthday to the Apache Software Foundation. And to all of you. <laughs> so, Open source software, I probably many of you have participated to the talk this morning uh, given by Thomas Kageik. I don't know who didn't. So everybody was there, apparently. So you, you know that open source software is used a lot at the uh, European uh, Commission, that we want to uh, uh, use it even more in the, in the future. It is also helping the, the European Union. There are many reasons why in the EU we, 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 uh, we um, everybody is using uh, open source software. You have some uh, reasons uh, on, on the screen uh, displayed in this, in this nice, uh, nice circle. Um, one of the important uh, points is the cost, uh, cost effectiveness where we, it is estimated that it accounts to 114 billion of money saved in, uh, instead of uh, purchasing proprietary yeah. software. Well, that's, that's the financial reason, but there are many others, mm -hmm. the security and the openness of the, of the source code, which we are actually um, looking at at, uh, at this uh, FOSA, FOSA project, analyzing the source code of, the, of some of the key uh, infrastructure projects of the uh, run uh, run using open source uh, software, mm. Mm, the transparency as well, and many many other reasons. I don't yeah, know, Sanjit, yeah, yeah. if you would like no, to add I, something. I, I think that we're we're preaching to the converted here, but um, it really is uh, adding a lot of value. Um, the whole ecosystem of the software ecosystem, the the, the users. They see a lot more transparency, especially if public administrations use open source. And so we are committed and it's already helping us. So we are addressing some of the things one by one and security is, is, is our project. So the, we, uh, as you may know, uh, that uh, Thomas was partially mentioning, we are we have an, a strategy for uh, open source software at the at the Commission. Each strategy uh, is uh, each each strategy um, evolution or, or version is is preceded by by a study and by a discussion with the with the management and the and the uh, colleagues at the at the uh, at the Commission. So the previous study done in 2013. There were been many people that had reservations about the use of open source software. This time, I think we didn't meet anyone that, uh, that uh, was actively um, opposing the, the going deeper using open source yeah. software. And one of the projects that is helping to, to cha changing this uh, um, perception is, is, the, is the FOSA project where we actually work closer with the communities. We, we approach many, I mean, my, my, many of you may, may have met, uh, met us uh, during, during the project uh, execution, and this helps understanding that uh, actually what the um, European uh, uh, Commission and the European institutions at large are doing is very similar. It is a, uh, that to what the open source uh, communities uh, are doing. This is all uh, for public good, for, um, yeah, for... Absolutely, yeah. So, the FOSA project. Um, the project started after the famous or, or, or infamous heartbeat bug in 2014. Uh, two members of the uh, parliament, Julia Reda and uh, Max Anderson, you can see them on the photo below, 
they said we have to do something about it. Um, they proposed to have a pilot project where we would check the software used at the um, EU uh, institutions, in the European Union institutions, for vulnerabilities and targeting the open source software because uh, Halblit was uh, the first major vulnerability of, of that scale that was discovered in open source software. At the same time, the the, the, the project wasn't to, to blame the open source software, it was to help the open source software, it was to, 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 to help the communities, and then the, during the, the, the other targets of the project was to, to help uh, use this open source software actually more in the, in the, uh, in the EU uh, institutions. So the project uh, f finished in 2016, you can see on this uh, chart, we will talk about uh, in a second what it achieved. In uh, 2000. Uh, uh, 16, when what it was about to end, we, we had uh, Marice Schake, who is in the middle, uh, in the photo in the middle, another member of the European Parliament who wanted to uh, the, e the EU to try running back bounties. These two approaches got merged, and then we have a preparatory action that lasts for three years with a budget of 2.6 million euros, where we run uh, a number of activities which uh, were yeah, not possible in the, in the pilot project. All this is a standard way of uh, the parliament to propose new approaches to the, uh, for the EU to do and for the commission to propose later to do. So we hope that this will become a standing EU activity in the, in the near uh, future. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So, okay. pilot project, what did we do? The methodology for uh, evaluating which software is actually critical for us, which software, we, which soft open source software we are using. It's uh, open source software is scattered around the, the organization, everywhere in the data center, desktop uh, machines, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically everywhere so that we have a uh, methodology for doing an inventory and an inventory done. Uh, we have uh, been doing a public which survey. Was, which, was, which was the first time. I mean, yeah. it's, there's no shame in saying that we didn't really know what open source we were using. Um, obviously, you know the major ones, but all open source, even now we don't think we have captured every single Yeah, but before item. There, yeah. there were inventories of open source software done in the, in the commission, but these were based on surveys sent to all yeah. IT departments, and then they had to fill in an Excel sheet where saying we are using this and that, and um, yeah. how many instances exactly. manually. That yeah. th this yeah. time we are no, well. Thanks to this project, this this is now automated and extracted from the from the actual actual systems. Yeah. We did uh, engage with the with the uh, with some of the communities in, in with a much smaller scale than the, we are doing now in the FOSA mm. two project. We had a public survey to see what the uh, people think we should be um, analyzing and which software we should be screening for, for vulnerabilities. And for that, we used code reviews at, at that time. At that time. Mm -hmm. there, was, uh, there were two uh, projects screened at that time. Uh, one of them was uh, KeePass, and the other one was Apache HTTP server. In mm -hmm. the case of the, of the second, there was uh, <laughs> there wasn't much. Yeah. No, no, wasn't uh, anything actually worth mentioning uh, f found. So this is the method on the screen. You can see the methodology. How do we find which software is critical for the use of the in, in, when used in the in the uh, EU institution? So we have the list of open source software. We have the uh, criticality index index, which is uh, calculated based on uh, different on forty different criteria. Um, then we, based on all this and the number of instances and so on and so forth, we have we have a list that is ordered by criticality, and you can see on the right the the result of that. How we see that, for three, example, three the Apache colors. HTTP uh, yeah. is at the top of the of the list. So um, you can see different colors. The yeah. the one on the top, yes, is the the software that was that is used in the data center. You can see. Um, software that is used, used on the uh, desktop and also another type of software used on the desktop that is so-called virtualized applications, which, uh, yeah. well, they are managed different, differently when, in, when, when installed on the, on the desktop. So this, this is the list that we got. Then with this list, we went, to the, we went out and uh, created a survey. You can see it on the, on the right on the here. Right. We propose, we, we, uh, of all the lists that was of, the, of, of software, we, we asked the, the community, we, uh, everybody was able to fill in, um, 
to, to answer this question. Which of these do you consider the most critical to do, to try in this pilot project to, to, to see how, uh, whether there are, there are some critical vulnerabilities? You can see the top answers were for KeePass and Apache HTTP server. Which is uh, remarkable, for which uh, we don't expect the public to, to know much about um, you know, the, the server side, but uh, here we are. They, they came up with that. Very interesting. So that, that was the pilot project <coughs> attended in 2016. The reaction was very positive. The, we, everybody said we should do more of it. The code reviews, there was quite a substantial amount of money that was uh, spent on this and on, on this activity. And we didn't find a lot of uh, vulnerabilities. And the, also, that was a very hard work for the, for the team that was, that was uh, engaged in this project sitting and looking at the code of, uh, and analyzing the code using automated, automated uh, code scanning, using manual code scanning, uh, manual yeah. looking at the code, using different techniques to, to, find, uh, to try to find vulnerabilities. And yes, the, the results were not, uh, not very um, well. well, not, I mean, well they, they were, that the, was good to do, to, to try it out, but the, the, the results were not uh, cost effective, I would say. Yeah. Um, the question was, okay, you're finding bugs, you're just causing more problems, you're adding to the list of things that we are doing anyway. Shouldn't, we, shouldn't you maybe also help us with uh, f fixing some of the, of the bugs? So the engagement with the community was also... It was limited at that time. Uh, that yeah, it was uh, admittedly not, uh, not sufficient, so mm. we, are, we are doing it more now. But in general, the methodology works we, to find which software we should screen to, to, uh, mm. to, to work. Uh, that, yeah, and it also works with the complex procedures of the uh, public uh, administration with the financial regulation that we have. Uh, for, for, uh, for managing the budget. So, so, for example, there are 48 criteria, right, to yeah. work out criticality. Uh, so this methodology is available on JoinUp, um, and I believe a number of institutions are looking at it. So results of the pilot project, they, they are available publicly. You can find them on JoinUp. That's... Uh, if you're, if you're interested uh, to, to see how it went. But the main reason we are here is to talk about the next evolution of the project, which is about to end, which is the FOSA 2. And okay. I will thank hand you. over to Saranji to, to, to guide you through this part. Right, so um, thank you, thank you, Marek. Uh, it's a great um, introduction to the background and how we, how we got here. So um, we had a small budget in the initial um, um, project pilot project was one million, and so this was uh, slightly more, the 2.6 million. Um, so they said, go out and talk to more institutions. Don't just keep it to the European Commission, which is a good thing to do. Um, and we needed to find more innovative ways of finding bugs than code reviews, because that's just professional services, really, and you don't know what you're going to get at the end of uh, all that effort. And, um, and go deeper, engage wider and deeper with uh, communities and uh, look at the existing issues. As Marek said, there are always um, things to be done. Um, so how can we help uh, crack some of those? And I think uh, spreading awareness meant a slightly bigger uh, campaign, communications campaign. So those are the objectives. And uh, how did we uh, carry out and meet those objectives via these activities? Um, public surveys and interviews, um, you know, they were successful. This time we're doing a developer survey as well as a public survey. And the developer survey has just uh, gone bananas. There's, there's so many people who are responding to it, which is very interesting. Um, so we, we are also, um, as part of this, uh, there are many work packages. And one, of, one of those is to conduct a study uh, uh, on the state of open source worldwide. And another one, uh, we'll talk to you about uh, some of these in, uh, in a minute. Uh, then we had the bug bounty programs, which have proven very cost efficient and very effective. And uh, hackathons, so it's, uh, it's been all, um, all go. So on the bug bounties. Okay, so uh, as Thomas explained earlier this morning, uh, it's um, from a procurement perspective, it's very strange to 
have money not being spent on a project and not knowing how much is going to be spent. Uh, but still, we, we managed to overcome that, and I think uh, for the first time, the European institutions have run uh, a fully-fledged bug bounty program. And um, so this became our uh, primary security audit method. And so what we did was to talk to about uh, seven or eight uh, European institutions, ask them what software they're using, um, and what they considered um, you know, most critical for them that we should audit. And so we, we looked at what we wanted, what they wanted, merged it together and selected uh, 15 programs for, for bug bounties. Um, nine of them have finished. That means the budget's run out. And um, so, you know, that's, that's very, very good for us because it shows that uh, the prize money has gone to uh, the ethical hackers and uh, six of them are running, uh, many of those are close to completion. And of the 15, two of those are uh, Apache software. Uh, so, you know, um, Kafka is, is, is a recent newcomer, but it's become so important within the organization. And, and Tomcat continues to be. And um, the Tomcat bug bounty is, you know, what happens is when people raise issues, they need to be evaluated so the program is paused because if that proves to be uh, a, a correctly identified vulnerability, then the prize money goes there. Uh, if it isn't, that money comes back into the pot and the program restarts. So that's where we are at the moment, uh, and at the moment we are contracted to the end of uh, November. So you can see some uh, interesting names there. Uh, the quotes on the right-hand side are, are really uh, from the press. And, um, you know, we've got the names and all of these, um, oh, you know, in terms of publications. So it was interesting to find a 20-year, um, you know, the bug that had been in the system for 20 years. And uh, some of the server-side products are not very sexy. They don't attract a lot of um, uh, ethical hackers. But the ones that do are generally... Uh, very interested in that field and, and dig deep. And uh, this is a, a great uh, achievement. Right. Well, there's one thing that I wanted to add here, yeah. that we were asked to help also fixing the bugs. So in this case, which was also for some of the bug bounty platforms, we've been running yes. with, with three, uh, Integrity, HackerOne, and uh, Be My... Uh, sorry. Um, the, the third one yes. is um, Econocom. Uh, Econocom and, yes, uh, we hack. Econocom, yeah. yes, we hack. Yes. Uh, the, they were a little bit surprised when we were discussing with them. Yes, you know, not, we don't only want to pay for, for the vulnerabilities, but we also want to have a bonus for, for those that, that actually fix them at the same time. Absolutely. But this is what happened, and some of these, like, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, the, some, of, some of these vulnerabilities were also, the submissions con contained also fixes, which could be then implemented by the, yeah. by the, by the relevant communities. We, basically, it was for 20% more more money for those that, that were able to, to do that. So that was one way of, hmm. uh, of addressing the, 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 the criticism that we are just making <laughs> more. Adding uh, to the to, list. Adding to the list. We are trying to also help uh, fixing it. But there are more coming. Although we were told that people who fix bugs and people who find bugs are different. Yes. But there seem to be some who can do both. Okay. Yes, you had a question. I think it's like 20% also, like the 20%, but, but it's like 20% of the vulnerabilities, they contain also the, the fix. So it's not, it's not, uh, not we, we, we're going to get all of that. But data this is, this is the comment from the, from the, uh, from the bug bounty platforms. They know their, uh, their, yeah. their uh, researchers or hackers best. And they say the techniques for finding the vulnerabilities are much different than the, than the yes, techniques course. used for coding. So they don't, don't always know how to, how to properly program these things, but they know how to find the holes. Okay. And we make sure they don't introduce the vulnerability first and then fix it. Um, so there was one, one case where we had to be very, very sure. Okay. So where are we at the moment? Uh, 606 bugs reported, uh, 213 accepted, which is a pretty decent number. 
um, which shows there are too many uh, frivolous bugs reported. Of these, approximately 70 are high or critical, which is remarkable. And uh, the bug bounties paid are, are, are this region. And, um, you know, in, in a way, we hope that all our prize money gets used up. That's, that's the idea. So some, um, um, some bug bounties needed a stimulus, so we, we have some knobs to turn. We increase the prize money uh, during the summer and various other, other techniques. But uh, we have, we've had participation in all the bug bounties, which is really great. So we can't say that one didn't really, there was no take up. And if you look at the, um, the quote on the right, I mean, who would have thought uh, VLC is such a mature software and to find uh, so many issues? Not all of these are from our bug bounties, but this is a quote um, that uh, has recently been strengthened by the bug bounty program. Um, you may have seen this slide before, Kafka, zero vulnerabilities. And we, we are actually happy that it's gone through some degree of scrutiny. It's, it's not always to, to find bugs, but it's, it needs to be good effort. Um, uh, you know, we have, it's, been, it's so cost efficient from our perspective. We appreciate that the ethical hacker, hackers would have put in so much effort. Uh, but uh, that's uh, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Uh, very good, 142 hackers. And uh, for, bug, uh, for uh, Tomcat, we have three vulnerabilities and, uh, um, you know, 13 submissions. Still uh, very, very, very good. So the bug bounty program continues, and it's uh, almo almost towards the end. So we had uh, three hackathons, and uh, the, our idea was that um, we run the bug bounties, and all the bugs that come out of it, maybe they'll be fixed in the hackathons, right? But it didn't work out like that. Okay, so uh, because of the timing issues, um, or didn't work out like that completely. So the first hackathon we held in in March. Uh, April, and um, it was the, with the PHP Symphony uh, community and the API platform, and they brought 65 people. Um, that we had 65 people from within the commission and um, uh, from all over the world, um, primarily Europe, uh, from France, and um, they say that um, they achieved two and a half months of work within, within you know, 1.75 1, 1 days, which was remarkable. Um, and they, they hadn't met, many of them hadn't met each other physically, um, which was really good. And some of the issues that came out of our conversation with them, like sustainability, diversity, actually have shaped our program, uh, project's agenda going on into the future. I'll come on to that later on. So that was a resounding success, and there are some videos that uh, we've recorded uh, with people saying that. Uh, the next one was in May, uh, not very far away, and uh, we initially thought we were going to invite Tomcat only, and, um, but we, we had the opportunity to broaden it out to um, a number of other communities as well, all under the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, umbrella, uh, very successful as well. And we've just had a third one where, a, a, in October, where the European Union's own projects, primarily the European Commission, but there were some other institutions as well. Uh, our projects which are using open source and, and the open source community, so we had about 86 people this time, so about 50% were from outside. Um, as far away as Japan, USA, Sri Lanka, uh, Tunisia, and, and, and the rest uh, from within Europe and, um, and Iceland and lo lots of places. So, the, yeah. Yeah, no, please, of course. So, this, the, the, the three hackathons, the, 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 this was a gr great success. I think that for, for our uh, Management, they are like, yes, well, let's do it more. Why don't we do it more? Why didn't we do it before? It's, let's, uh, that, so I'm sure this will be continued in the, internally in the, in the commission, but also 
in having hackathons that are that are uh, bringing together the open source communities and the uh, people from working for the for the uh, for the EU institutions, like it happened for the three ones. Absolutely. Um, what else? Slides, uh, well, one lesson learned: these hackathons, we organize them on Sundays, uh, Saturday, uh, weekends, so Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. And this is a lesson learned. We will not do that probably anymore because. I don't it know. was so difficult to get uh, people on the on the weekends to, to to participate, even if it was fun, even if there was, I mean, the the yeah. place was great. But yes, this is a lesson learned. We will probably do it during the week, and we are, we have yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, let's take a poll. I mean, would you prefer it on the weekend or during the week? During the week and the weekend. Okay, so during the week, great, because we were under the impression that. Uh, these things are generally held outside of work time. That is precisely it. Uh, outside of work time is mostly on the weekends. Yeah. Many of us looking around the room are old enough that it's easier to ask our employer for a day to contribute to this okay. than it is to take a day of our own time. That's really great news for us because uh, our own commission staff were. You know, when you have to pack a suitcase and say, I'm, I'll be back in two days' time, I'm flying. That's a completely different experience than saying, I need to go back to work again on Saturday. And so there was resistance. Okay, so here's a happy bunch of people from the Apache um, um, you know, um, hackathon we had. And some of you may be there. Okay. Right, so then another item of work which we um, commissioned was primarily in the area of let's fix some known uh, criticality, some, some bugs, and also uh, update um, uh, the, the, the automation of, um, of vulnerabilities. When, when Drupal updates a patch, there are so many servers that when they uh, fix the first server and the last server, there's, there's a few hours. And during that time, everything is known, that vulnerability, and that creates a window. So to create an automated patching mechanism. And um, we've, we've, that's one of our ways of contributing to uh, the Drupal community. But also, we, this, is, this project is not a grant-based project. Or, so we have to have a business reason for ourselves. And uh, so it's our project for helping us as well as the others. So the vast majority of our external-facing websites, of which there are Hundreds or thousands? But, uh, uh, there are 200 separate websites under the Opera domain which are run using uh, Drupal. Using Drupal. Seven, and there's yeah. each eight. of them consists of uh, hundreds of, of, uh, of uh, pages, subsites, and so on. So, I mean, this is, this is huge. So, yeah. uh, yes. So, m m managing the update process of, of, of this is, uh, is, uh, is a lot of work. And th this wasn't automated so far. So, it was all done uh, manually and especially when a vulnerability was detected on a weekend, that means that the people who were on, on duty had to go back and then manually work on it. So we hope that with this, this uh, the, the, it will be much better for both for us and for everybody using, using Drupal to, to have uh, the okay. updates automated. Yeah, it works going pretty well. Um, there was three work packages. The first one's finished and um, we will, they've certainly architected it and now building it, it's all open. On the, uh, on the on the on 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 the web, it's all available. Okay, so one of the other things we wanted to do, we are very conscious of the large open source foundations, and you are obviously one of the the larger ones. Um, and we know the money pouring into some of the larger projects uh, with the private companies using um, those software, and obviously they want to strengthen that for themselves and and to be altruistic. But we, as the European Commission, are conscious of the ecosystem. So we wanted to reach out to uh, some of the smaller micro communities, uh, just to talk to them and say, hey, what's happening? What challenges are you facing? Uh, and so see, there, there are some of the names there. And um, some of them didn't turn out to be that small. Arduino, we thought was a small company, turned out to be 100 people. Um, but they grew very fast. Um, and uh, the issues are 
almost predictable, but not quite. Um, first, many of them are started by experts who have already been involved in other projects. So there's a body of knowledge. Some of them are brand new, um, who, you know, people who didn't have that experience. So is the knowledge transfer happening from the larger communities to smaller ones or vice versa? Um, we, we wanted to talk about that. Sustainability is a big issue because uh, in the early stages you keep investing. Uh, and in fact, sustainability is also an issue with mature projects. It's not necessarily lack of finance, but a lack of personnel who are interested in some of those technologies and, and they need fresh blood. So this has been an eye-opener to talk to some of these people. And we will obviously publish our results and uh, conversations. So it's very, very interesting. Okay, I mentioned these other studies. So each project that we do, we need to be looking at um, uh, licensing issues. And we need to make sure that it's properly supported when it goes live. Um, it wouldn't surprise you to know that software projects sometimes contain a plethora of open source components, which are nobody's developers just downloaded it and started to use it. <laughs> so uh, with all the best will in the world, we, we haven't um, cross-checked everything and whether we're breaking any licenses and all those things. So we're getting our act together uh, as an organization and uh, also looking at, so what kind of support can we provide to our projects? So that's that first study, a very important one. Um, and then we periodically, when we update our open source strategy, which my friend Kais is uh, spearheading, um, we, we do a study, we put our finger on the pulse of open source and find out what's going on, what's the best practice uh, in the uh, area of uh, public administrations and private companies. Uh, we, we look at what studies have already been done, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we interviewed our own people and asked them, how did you think the last one was? Was it any good? Was it just a piece of paper that nobody read? Uh, you know, what, what do we do with open source now? What do you, where do you want to take it? And um, so with some interesting results, uh, Marek is being very kind by saying that no one was opposing it. I think there is still opposition out there, but um, not openly opposing it in the sense that because it's such a proven thing, there is resistance uh, in some quarters, but on the whole, uh, within the commission, it's, it's been remarkably positive. Um, so that has fed into the uh, open source strategy, which uh, is due to be released soon. Do you want to add anything to that? Okay. So, the, um, as part of the project, we also did re repeated the inventories to see which software is used. This is a list of top uh, most critical software according to the methodology used on the desktop of the, well, of, I don't know, 30, uh, more than 30,000 uh, uh, PCs used in the, in, in the commission. So, you can see the Firefox, of course, it's a, as a, uh, as a, an open source main open source product yes. used by most of the of the of the of the commission staff and uh, yes and one, one of the most critical ones and then you have the VLC which we already mentioned and many many others some of them are already part of the of the uh, bug bounty programs as yeah. you can see 7zip uh, putty and so on well, the yeah. so this is the same for server side that's a bit of a raw output of the, well, but this 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 is the uh, methodology applied to the inventory of software that we got from the uh, from the uh, from the data center, and that these are the libraries from the. So it's a slight change from the last one, but um, explained by in more Windows 10 implementations and um, and so on. It's very interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. So the communication strategy, we're almost towards the end of our presentation. Uh, just to say, uh, it has three components. Engaging with developers, we've, we've talked to you about um, reaching out to some of the smaller communities. We've also talked to the communities, obviously, who came to the hackathons and at the bug bounty stages. 
Um, there's a, an event coming soon, uh, which we'll talk to you on, on the next slide. Uh, we're going to hold an Ask Me Anything session in the third, co third week of November. And uh, we've had hackathons and conferences. Uh, there are two surveys. The developer survey is still open, and that's the QR code to, to take you there. And uh, we've, um, we've gone and we created content and tweeted it and put it, placed it at various places. So it's been uh, a lot more fruitful. In fact, this month, October, is the EU's Cybersecurity Month. So that's uh, coincidental. Um, and we've had to, we had an opportunity to change our uh, branding. Um, the earlier one was just put together. And uh, so we've got, a, we've got a website and we were able to give some goodies, not very expensive ones like here. And the eBay stand is full of uh, wonderful things, but uh, still. Okay, um, I think the, it's really been successful. Actually, for us, starting from the project charter, thinking what we ought to do when I first came in last year, and to see real results, I, I, I can't tell you. Some people feel that they do work and they, the project's not publicly visible, the benefits aren't visible. This is on the opposite side. You know, we, we've done something and genuinely we can see the manifestation of, of our thinking. And uh, we're very lucky. It's really a cooperative effort by the open source community. We're just uh, the catalyst. Uh, this, this major interest is, is important for, for, because I think it also raises the awareness of the importance. I mean, even if, if this is a just a project done at the level of the EU institutions, the, I think others reading in other public administrations in Europe or uh, worldwide, they, reading this, they are encouraged to do similar, yes. uh, similar approaches. And I know that in Singapore, they are, they are running bug bounties, yes. for example, and in many, many other places. Who knows, maybe this was uh, after... Uh, reading some, something of what we did or not. I know that... Uh, oh, they, they say that, the Singapore people, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so there is, uh, there is uh, a lot of positive uh, impact thanks to the interest of EU paying the hackers. I mean, that's, that, that was the, the uh, title yeah. of, the art of some of the most uh, um, daring articles, <laughs> <laughs> I would say. So, so that's, that's uh, a lot of uh, media buzz around it. That's, yeah. that's, that was... Uh, uh, really, really good. And it's very, still, very uh, useful. Yeah. Very useful. And it's still ongoing, actually. Still ongoing. And um, our digit Twitter account went haywire, so which is uh, just a statistic, but uh, just an interesting. Okay, so where do we go from here? We are towards the end of our uh, EU FOSA 2, and um, we've talked about how successful and highly visible the project is. So as Marek mentioned earlier, the hackathons as uh, an exercise have proven to be very effective. So we are going to use them for internal projects. Um, it's a quick way. I mean, ha the word hackathon is, is not always prize money. And, and I think the word has grown in, in, in usage and many internal. It's become a little bit uh, of a, an alternative word for agile, quickly arriving at decisions. So it could be any sort of management thing. or So hackathons will continue. Um, the project continuation, it, sometimes things don't work like instantly. So this, in order for it to become a permanent action, there's a certain degree of planning required. So uh, it, that is being discussed uh, right now. But the, the, the effort, whether in the shape of one project or another, is going to continue. Our focus on security of open source is it's, it's absolutely non-negotiable, uh, and not only on open source, um, cybersecurity and other proprietary systems. Um, and uh, Marek, perhaps you could cover the last uh, two or three points. Um. So the open source strategy is currently being updated. Uh, Thomas, during the talk, gave, gave you a glimpse of what, uh, what, what is coming there, yeah. the transforming of the way uh, we are uh, we are working internally more uh, using the open source uh, uh, 
uh, way of, of working internally, also for internal projects. And uh, also the use of open source software is, is increasing and uh, yes, this, this project was uh, one, one of the important elements encouraging people to, to use uh, open source software more, I think. And uh, one last uh, thing on the right hand side, you can see um, uh, open source beyond 2020. So that's an event next month, 14th and 15th. It's a joint uh, event with our project with uh, DG Connect. Um, and uh, basically, it's about the open source software and open source hardware. There are two streams, and a number of things are being discussed. So I urge you to please go to just search on these keywords and look at the, the streams, and we'd value your uh, participation and input to shape the way the European open source um, ecosystem uh, develops. Um, one of the topics is funding, sustainability, another is standards um, and uh, innovation. So it's, it's actually a very interesting thing and it's in Brussels. Okay. Why is it important? As Thomas mentioned also in his talk, Digit, yeah. the DG Informatics, is not a policy making DG. We are running the IT of the, of the Commission, yeah. but the policy is created elsewhere and one of the places where the policy around uh, uh, informatics is, is being uh, created is DG Connect, so that's important to have the two DGs participating together, and we are hoping that this will also uh, result in discussions yeah. that are fruitful for the continuation of the project in the future. Um, having done this project, I, I can assure you that um, everything that is said is recorded somewhere, and people do talk about it, take into account. So these conferences really do provide feedback to, to policies. Um, sometimes the, uh, the, the, the inclusion could take some time, or, but it certainly is discussed. And, uh, you know, all that remains for Marek and myself is to thank you. There's an email ID there, which is um, a functional mailbox we have access to. So where the persons come and go, that mailbox shall remain. Uh, we would love to hear from you. And, uh, yes, we'd like some questions now. Okay. Yes, yes, well. Thank you. So um, I may have missed it at the beginning around policy within the EU and open source. Is there um, a policy around future code that's being written that it would be in open source or a certain percentage of it? I know the French government um, are fairly active in and making sure that all the code that they write is open source going forward. Yeah. And, and then the US is like 20% of all federal yeah, code yeah, yeah. has to be open source. Okay. Um, I think that uh, I will say things that I'm absolutely sure of, okay, which is that we don't have a percentage in mind, but the direction is clear. Uh, already, um, many of the projects that we are doing, uh, have done in the past, have become open source. Uh, so there's EU survey, there's LEOS, there are many systems out there. And we've uh, created an European Union uh, license, EUPL. Okay. So this debate is going on about how we treat our entire IT, you know, whether we just say it's a blanket yes. So that's not, uh, that debate is at the moment carrying on. But more and more uh, the direction is whatever we do, should be open source, should be made public, unless it doesn't need to. That's the direction I think we're heading, but we're not there yet. I think we, we take note of the, of the French and, and the UK government's uh, decisions and other things. So I, I think we are very clear on that. And one of the things, as, as Tom said earlier, is that it's not just about code for us. Okay, I know we're, we're contributing, some of our developers contribute because they do it personally, right? They just contribute. Um, it's about us really transforming ourselves. Okay, I know we hear this word a lot, transformation, digital transformation, but and we need to break down the silos within our own IT function and other ways of working. We need to start sharing um, more than we do. And uh, so that open source spirit has to be injected in us 
And that is the transformation we're looking for. And once that's done, it, it is, you know, it, it can catapult then, it will go, you know, it'll take on speed. Because what we've seen open source is that it's come, it's a ground up uh, introduction to most companies. Most management don't sit, sit up and say, right, we're going to adopt open source. But it, there is so much open source and such a groundswell that management are now having to take notice worldwide. So there's a top-down acceptance now. And we are at that point where it could ignite. Um, for that, we have to be ready. We have to look at our staffing policies, what kind of people we attract, how we store code, how do we deal with sensitive things. So that's where we are at the moment. And my friend Kais, uh, is, um, uh, is he can talk to you about that because he's looking at the, the policy, him and Marek. Another question? Is there current collaboration between Open Forum Europe and EU FASA initiatives? Okay, so uh, Open Forum Europe is, um, is in a, you know, it, it's, it's a body in its own right. Um, there are many think tanks and bodies of that nature. So they talk to us, they raise issues, but there isn't um, any joint, uh, I mean, they're not uh, exclusively in any, in, any, in any sphere with us. So, you know, that's just one of the companies. And we, we, we love to talk to them, but uh, as we do to other <laughs> companies. Did you have anything specific in mind or that's, yeah? Yeah, no, that's, that's what it is, yeah. So, I um, mean, we, we, in fact, uh, Sachimo, uh, the CEO is talking in, as one of the uh, panelists in, in the next car. Uh, this car. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Thank you, Renato. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if you distinguish between open source, meaning once you've developed something, it's open, and an open process where the code is developed in the open with transparent communications. Okay. Well, I think... Um uh, yes, I mean, we, we do notice that, first of all. We know, we're know aware of the difference. Um, if a project is developed internally, and then as an afterthought, we want to make it open source, that's one scenario. Another is that right from the outset, it's open source. Then obviously everything is on Git or wherever it is, and it's, it's, it's transparent. But uh, yes, I mean, we are exploring all these things. These are some of the complexities, yeah? D does that answer your question? Or did you have something else in mind? Once you make it open source, yes. is the intent to continue something yes. in the open? Yes, I th I, look, I, I say yes, but that is the idea. I mean, unless it's some kind of, we're not a secretive JCHQ intelligence kind of unit, but so, yes, I mean, that's the intention, but uh, even if it isn't, if we develop something uh, and then we, we, could, we will add it to it, because what's the point of putting in the biggest block and then the enhancements or add-ons not to it? it? It wouldn't make sense. It would create a jumble. Yes, so I think the, the answer is yes. You mentioned uh, that you are publishing some of your software as open source. Yes. And you are using some new license for that. Why not Apache license okay. like we are used yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was a very good question. I think I will defer to, um, um, to Kais maybe to answer that on, on the EUPL side. Would you like to answer that? Yeah, yeah, please. No, no, it's fine. At least there's a, we'll get a better answer rather than just an attempt. So first on the, on the projects, to come back to your question, uh, lifespan of software development and lifespan of, of sof the software lifecycle at the European Commission is decades. So once these things are in the open source space, there is an engine behind it to make sure they continue to function and that there will be updates and community building and so on. And for the licenses, um, basically, if the project is um, simple enough, basic enough, um, the Commission will say we'll use any permissive license that seems suitable, like 
permissive licenses in the neighborhood of this project, we'll use that one. If the project is standing on its own legs and is a real big project that we will be using in the commission, we'll probably be preferring to use the EUPL license because it works with European copyright across the 28 member states and that was a big reason for us to develop the license in the first place. But there is nothing anywhere that keeps us from using any other license. So we're free to choose whatever license is the most suitable. So includes the Apache licenses. Okay. I think there are a few projects out there on the Renata, license. Renata, one last question. Is there, is there an OSI approved license? Is the EUPL, is that an OSI approved license? Yes. And um, just one yeah, point sure, was um, just just in answer to you to your question. So, um, with the UK government, the uh, government digital services, when they started working in open source, they but they were putting code out in GitHub. They called it coding in the open rather than open source because they yes. weren't actually engaged in building communities and taking contributions. Yes. So I'm an Apache Airflow uh, PMC, and we would love to be part of uh, security audits. Is it still possible to join, or like, uh, there, will there be any any way to join in the future? Okay. So um, okay. So first of all, the future is is ours to create, right? So, um, but as I said earlier, this specific project was to. Uh, it's you know it's part of Digit, so it's what we do for ourselves. So we have to choose software that we are using right now, and of that the most critical. Um, so it's not like an open one. So if we use your software and it becomes critical to us, it'll clearly get up on the list. However, um, the idea of hackathon cybersecurity is rife and it's open, and I think we do ask the general public also. Uh, and uh, there may be grants available, funding. So there are many mechanisms. But as far as this project is concerned, right now we're just closing it, learning the lessons, and seeing how we do it. But yeah, we get asked that question a lot. Uh, can you please include my project to get it uh, security vetted? But um, we love it that, that there's so much interest. Um, it's, it's very interesting. Okay, guys, thank you very much. And um, thank you.